Welcome back to Analytical Strategy. Today we're talking about my personal favorite top five ironic moments in Survivor history. Now there is probably an ironic moment in every episode of every season of Survivor. It is a way the show is filmed and a way the show is edited in order to give the viewer a sense of surprise of the events that are occurring throughout the show. I couldn't count how many times I've heard a contestant say they are running the game or they have never felt so comfortable prior to getting voted out that very episode. In a game Game like Survivor, it is not overly surprising this happens so frequently when players are getting told what they want to hear. But is what those players tell the camera in these one-on-one -on -one interviews that they often have to eat their words? In Survivor, what you think should or will happen is not a replica of what will exactly happen. We are just going to touch on five of my personal favorites, ironic moments in Survivor history. So firstly, we're going to be talking about the Mayor of Slamtown's Brochacho Blindside in Survivor David vs Goliath. This makes my top 5 for a number of reasons. Firstly, I am a huge David vs Goliath fan, and I think it is absolutely the best season of the modern era. Secondly, all of the characters involved in this particular vote are some of my favourites. Christian, Nick and Davey were obviously big, big fan favourites and great Survivor players. But even John, I really, really enjoyed watching him this season. He his Mayor of Slamtown antics to act up his character and personality, but more importantly to hide his intelligence was really well played. But thirdly, this vote out to me is one of the best moves ever made in Survivor history. So the Goliaths had control of the game after the merge, and after sending Elizabeth home, they were looking to take out the biggest jury threat in Christian. So within a confessional, John stated it was going to likely be a Brachacho blindside. After Dan, John, and Christian formed the Brachachos during the tribe swap earlier in the game, and he expected Christian to go home. Alex slipped this information to the Davids, and once this was obtained, they were able to put their plan into action. The Davids knew Dan had an idol, so they decided to play Davy's idol on Christian to protect him at Tribal, but also knew as Dan had his idol, he would likely play it in return. So they split the minority vote on John and Angelina to nullify the idol play of Dan, and this sent John home that night. It was indeed a Brochacho blindside, but not in the way John had intended. I also love the fact that John took it like an absolute champ, and he went out smiling all the way to Ponderosa. He's such a great and humble guy, and I would love, love to see him return to the game. So up next, we're going to be discussing Sandra being able to win the game not once, but twice, even when the villains of the season thought she had absolutely no chance. Firstly, within Survivor Pearl Islands, Sandra was an underdog from the beginning of the season and really appeared to be on the bottom of the Drake tribe in the second episode of the season. Johnny Fairplay said he would put a million on Sandra not being the final one of the season, but guess what? She absolutely was, and Fairplay also cast one of the winning votes for her to be the sole survivor. This was again replicated in Survivor Heroes vs Villains, with Russell thinking he had the game in his grasp, and that Sandra had absolutely no chance to win. Russell had the power of who he wanted to take to the end of the game, and he openly said to Sandra he wanted to take her as he thought she had no shot at the million dollar prize. This cuts to Sandra saying, I don't know about that. And again, we see Sandra as the sole survivor for a second time. It can be really difficult to predict the jury's votes in Survivor. But you should never rule anyone out completely until the votes are read, which is a big reason Sandra was able to slide all the way to the end of the game twice and become the first two-time winner in Survivor history. Now the next ironic moment I wish to discuss is just flat out spooky. It goes all the way back to Survivor Pearl Islands again, and when Lil was voted out of the game. Now when a contestant gets voted out of Survivor, they get up, they get their torch, they walk over to Jeff Probes, they stick it in the ground, and Jeff will snuff your torch to send you on your way. In Lil's case though, once she stuck her torch in the ground, Jeff did snuff it, but Lil's flame did not want to go out. Jeff even said afterwards, let's try that again, they do not want you to go, and could only snuff Lil's torch on his second attempt. Now this is obviously a little bit crazy, considering the infamous outcast twist within this season, and Lil being one of the two players to return to the game. 
Now generally when we think of an ironic moment in Survivor, we think of something a contestant has said, but this was truly in the hands of the Survivor gods, with Lil's flame coming back upon her return to the game. Now I believe this is the only time we have seen a flame not be able to be snuffed the first time in the history of Survivor. Now this doesn't mean this is the only time it's happened, but due to her return, this could have made the edit and forecasted this return specifically. It was really a bizarre moment in Survivor history to say the absolute least. So up next, in my penultimate spot, in my favourite five ironic moments, it has to go to my main man, Eric Reichenbach, for winning the final five immunity challenge in Survivor Micronesia. This immunity challenge to get into the final four was without question the most important of the season, and Eric was able to guarantee himself a spot in that final four, and give himself a really, really strong chance at getting to the end and winning the game. The challenge Eric was able to win though, ironically had a puzzle component, and this puzzle read, Guaranteed Final Four. Unfortunately for Eric, he was playing with four of the most devious survivor women of all time, who were able to convince him to give up his immunity necklace to redeem himself with the jury, before voting him out straight away. So this move solidified Suri, Amanda and Parvati as legends of the game, and it is a massive reason as to why we all want to see Natalie Bolton get the chance to play Survivor again. Unfortunately for Eric, this move is constantly brought up by Jeff and members of the Survivor community, but he should be remembered for so much more than this. He was able to make the final five twice and he left the game both in unusual circumstances. Firstly via this move and secondly via a medevac. Eric does have some great attributes for Survivor, there is no doubt about that. But in this circumstance, he was completely outplayed by some of the best players ever. And it is that guaranteed Final Four puzzle. It was just another layer to an amazing episode and an amazing move in Survivor history. And therefore, takes my number two spot in my top five countdown of Survivor's ironic moments. And that leads me to my favourite ironic moment in Survivor history, and it has to go to Kat's elimination within Survivor One World. Now I really like Kat. I think she has matured into an amazing person, and was a fantastic character in Survivor One World, and really was a standout contestant within this cast. Her elimination, however, left her in a world of hurt and pain by being portrayed by her closest allies in the game. Kat went into this tribal targeting one of her closest allies in Sabrina, expecting to pull off a massive Massive blindside prior to sending Sabrina to Ponderosa. Kat exclaimed at this tribal to everyone that if a blindside did happen, it would be pretty fun and exciting, and she personally is always excited when blindsides do go down. Unfortunately for Kat, she didn't realise she was going to be on the end of that very blindside, with each and every remaining person in the game casting their vote for her to be eliminated in 7th place. The irony in this is further enhanced by how truly devastated Kat was when she was voted out, in tears the whole way to Ponderosa, extremely upset at her friends and in particular Kim. Even after taking the time to unwind for a couple of days, she still wasn't very friendly with the contestants, such as Alicia when they came to Ponderosa, getting really angry and confrontational with them upon their arrivals for lying to her. Kat thankfully was able to turn this around prior to the final tribal, with a big part of her pitch being to forgive, rather than to focus on this type of anger which was so great to see. Again, I think Kat would be the first to admit that she was a little bit naive and immature, and it would play a major role in how these events shaped out, but from what I've seen of her in interviews recently, she does seem like a fantastic person, and it was a joy to see her goofy personality shine within one world up into her fun and exciting blindside. It was one of my favourite Survivor moments, and it definitely takes the number one spot for me in my favourite ironic moment in Survivor history. As there have been so many ironic moments throughout the duration of Survivor, I would love to hear your personal favourites in the comments below. If you are enjoying these discussions, please leave the video a like and hit that subscribe button, as there will be a range of more content to be released very, very soon. Thank you all so, so much for watching. This is Analytical Strategy, signing out once again, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.